we have gathered here to discuss the memoirs of prabir prakast and uh, and we have a panel of eminent journalist writers advocate who will be speaking about the book and the subject i just want to say one thing about probir right now probir has been in the news for reasons that you all know but what's really important about the book and what moved me personally the most is the fact that here's a man who i have personally known as a friend as a comrade as a mentor um as a leader for many years but there's a way in which even if you know the person very well you don't get a sense of the entirety of their life and their life's work and that's really what this book does because what it tells you is that here's a person who has been in every way everything that a good citizen of this country should be he has been an outstanding citizen of this country and he has been a patriot who has fought for the sovereignty of the country on issues of patents on telecom and so on and so forth on the nuclear uh, uh, on the nuclear deal and so on you know all of this you'll get a sense of when you read the book he is also one of the very few people who has the distinction of having been imprisoned by two authoritarian regimes 50 years apart and for somebody like me who's much younger than him but who was always looked up to probir as as i said as a friend but also as a leader as a comrade this really is truly inspiring that here's a man who at this stage in his life is in they can imprison his body but they cannot imprison his mind and they cannot imp- and they cannot put a lock on people who will speak up in this country that's what this book is all about keeping up the good fight i read the book with great interest it's uh, very simply narrated it's a simple story at the surface very straightforward accessible but actually very nuanced and full of insights and surprises in the stories that it tells and the most interesting thing of course is the connection it draws between the emergency of 1975-77 and in particular kabir's role in it uh, that he was picked up mistaken for somebody else and then although uh, they brought that mistake to light repeatedly it was said that uh, the matter involved the prime minister's house which was code word for sanjay gandhi and his group at that time and uh, so they kept him in for one year and i think the story of uh, prabhir's uh, imprisonment under uh, the maintenance of internal security act or misa for no conceivable reason is fascinating full of humor he learned many lessons from it and that has to be read and then connecting it to the, what has happened to the present much more serious attack in perhaps darker times whether it's a kind of undeclared emergence or not is not the issue here but institutions have been captured institutions have been manipulated and uh, media freedom is under full scale attack of course there are still spaces where people speak up and prabhi's book brings that out very clearly Uh, but uh, it's it's a very uh, disturbing period that this year and i would only refer to it as the hindutva authoritarian regime we can talk about uh, specifics or some of the highlights of what journalists and media organizations have been through but that perhaps can be done later but i think the most important thing here in this book for me anyway is that uh, Pra- prabir talking about the 1970s emergency say, says that uh, you know uh, demolishes or takes issue with the conventional wisdom which is that uh, people at that time supported the emergency they then went through the two and a half years and then they voted indira gandhi out because they didn't like it and prabir takes issue with this saying that uh, this is to underestimate 
or misread the character of the Indian people, their attitudes, their responses. They, they wait and watched. But 1977, he says, gave them confidence. They are not passive. They are very, very observant. And in 1977, the, conf the confidence that they had made them return Indira Gandhi to power in 1980. A very interesting take on what happened. And I think the lesson for today is things may look bad for media freedom and for the rights of people, fundamental rights, basic human rights, rights guaranteed in our constitution. But uh, don't be pessimistic about it. Well, uh, I did not know Prabir very well. I have met him on an occasion. It was a social occasion. And he came across as a quiet, polite man who seemed to be firm in whatever he thought and believed in. I was saying that we, as a nation, tend to value our liberties so cheaply. And possibly one reason that we value our liberties so cheaply is that we have people like Prabir. We have, in this generation, we have people like Umar Khalid. We have the Kabir Kalamanch. We have so many people who, in Justice Krishna Iyer's picturesque words, are martyrs of the Constitution. And that's the only way I see them. That we have a written Constitution. We have institutions that are supposed to administer the Constitution. But when those institutions fail, it is these men and women of conscience who fight the good fight, who remind us that the Constitution is a solemn compact between citizen and citizen, that this is the nation that we will work together and we will live together. It's unfortunate that Prabir has been a victim of defending the Constitution twice in his lifetime. But to add, end with Prabir's own take on why he's not a victim, he says, victimhood robs us of participation in the creation of history. It, reads, uh, it reduces us to mere objects of history. Instead, I would like to assume the vantage point of the people as makers of history. Yes, the government of the day wields powers that seem to overwhelm individuals and organizations. But it is people and their actions that finally determine history. Not as we please and when we please, but in ways that neither the people nor their rulers anticipate. They say, cometh the hour, cometh the man. Sometimes, wittingly, unwittingly, knowingly, unknowingly, people are chosen to represent the temper of their times. I hope that Prabir is out. I hope that we do not put, that this republic does not put too high a burden on him. His incarceration is for no other reason than the malice and desire to suppress and that through individuals, intellectually, politically, physically, in order to suppress uh, the people and the nation at large and for as a means to power and self-glorification. I just want to say at a personal level that I read this book and I'm missing him. I'm missing him because I'm missing the fact I wanted to say to him, Are, tumne ye kyon nahi bataya mujko? you know, there is so much, uh, Sudanwa said, I have known him for 50 years. We have we had intense uh, uh, engagements together. We have had discussions. We have talked about personal things. We know. And yet there is so much more in this book that I did not know. I did not know. And it has been written in a way that make, has meaning for anybody who picks it up. The first emergency. I want to say that first emergency, second emergency. I don't want to say that that is an undeclared, declared. There is nothing different. Whatever it is, that was an 
after soon after that there was the people they started against that it was just 10 months it was a silence and the people were hiding then everybody came together and started organizing against the authoritarian the government but now after so many years also there is no such effort is not happening this authoritarian state is not even allowing that kind of a voices to coming together and they want to say openly that the opposition should be mukt bharat opposition mukt bharat in democracy no prime minister or any person cannot say that there should not be opposition opposition is an important in the democracy so the person who is saying there is no opposition is required and we have to opposition mukt bharat banana keh raha hai matlab it is in a very clear that no democracy is required it is in a open statement that cannot be done in any democracy we must join hands and say very clearly in the democracy there are 435000 citizens are under trials without anything in this country what is this democracy we are talking about it is not talking about the prabir is in there in the jail we are talking about the citizens how they are all in the jail without any reason why i have taken to the jail i don't know some day you will declare is this is the democracy we are all accepting these are the larger questions we are now bringing and that is the reason this book release is not just release it is a releasing our regenerating our energy to fight against any authoritarian state the author of the evening uh, the citizen of the evening the engaged citizen of the evening the fighter of the evening is here with us and yet not with us so um this anomaly is a sad sign of our times um Prabir speaks a great deal in his book about the ways in which people's rights are curtailed, weakened, um, even taken away in both times past and present. But I want to say that that is not the complete story. This is something Prabir was very eager to point out when he spoke to us, um, what kept him going. day after day um and in the course in the book uh is to say that the book as our lives is not just bad news it's not just about dark times um the sort of um hope the sort of political commitment the um uh, belief in the good fight and in fighting the good fight that animates the book is very much here with us in this room and i do want to underline that point because that mix of both the awareness of dark times as well as our belief that it is for us to do something about it is very much here so um i I, and I say this, I say this because even though it's a memoir and Prabir, the individual person, is there, he's always placed in a larger context, in a collective, a collective that can grow into a movement, um, ally with other movements and push for change that will mean better lives for many people. I do want to... read one line which is the story of our recent past and one that continues to unfold is not just about repression the story is incomplete without the resistance we have witnessed <coughs> written about and been part of and i think this is um, what uh, uh, keeps us going and let me also say um, we keep talking about the good fight um as ashok will say we writers like to pick on words and say what is the good fight that we are sort of glibly referring to uh i think that the good fight descent 
the political test, all this that we're talking about, for many of us here, it is whether they be a writers or readers or journalists, students, teachers, it is simply the freedom, the right to continue doing our jobs. And we are in a time when lawfare, intimidation, draconian laws are stopping us from doing our work. There was one moment where he describes the day the emergency is, uh, sorry, the day the election results have come out in 77 and it becomes slowly clear in Delhi that uh, Mrs. Gandhi is losing the election by a landslide. Uh, he says that he was down with fever that day and could not be out. And he describes how outside the offices of the press, outside Indian Express, outside the Times of India, there were celebrations ongoing. Uh, that's a scene that seems extremely difficult to reconcile uh, in today's time, especially with another general election on our head. I think 77 marked uh, a very good period, a good point of departure for the media. I think on the whole, the media did not perform the press, that is printed newspapers at that time, more or less, that is the whole media, uh, did not perform well during the emergency. Prabir is a little kind about it, but I think uh, I remember very well, uh, and Mr. Adwani's uh, famous statement, that you crawl when you're asked to bend, I think is absolutely on the mark. Um, but after that was a very good run for the media for a long time. I think between 19, uh, from the late seven, uh, 1970s for perhaps nearly 20 years, uh, there was independent journalism. There were lots of spaces. There was coverage of people's movements in quite a few sections of the press. And journalism seemed to flower. And I used to say in those days, when I, whenever I was asked about the media, that India is in an enviable position, certainly in the developing world, when it comes to press freedom. But of course, if you said anything like that today, you'll be accused of purveying uh, fake news. Uh, I think uh, it is shameful that large sections of the media have been suborned. Uh, of course, they have come under attack. If you can understand why some of them are afraid uh, journalists have been murdered. We have the data on that from the Committee to Protect Journalists. We have data on how many journalists have been uh, uh, charged under the UAPA. Uh, uh, the Wire story brought that out. We know that India is in, the, uh, is in a unique position uh, at the Global Impunity Index, where journalists are murdered in connection with their work and nothing seems to, no justice is rendered. And we are a founding and permanent member of that uh, club of shame uh, that is uh, documented year after year by the committee, CPJ, the Committee to Protect Journalists. But this is where I agree with Prabir. Uh, and of course, he, the, the book largely leaves out what the latest attack on NewsClick. But I was very encouraged by the solidarity campaign spoken about earlier by the president of the Press Club of India and others. I think uh, it's a bit surprising for our, all of us that so many organizations, press clubs, the Editors Guild of India, uh, the other, uh, other organizations, uh, the uh, Network of Women in Media India, DigiPub, of course, uh, also the Committee to Protect Journalists and others came out in solidarity. And we know that uh, uh, you know, the whole McCarthyite campaign, I think it's not, it's not essentially a media story. It's about uh, a completely new uh, uh, socio-political formation, ideological formation, which has uh, injected a lot of poison into the uh, uh, information ecosystem. They all descended on this. And I think this aspect has been missed in some of the analysis. The McCarthyism, that descended on NewsClick and uh, in Prabir and American Prabir in particular, uh, aided and abetted, sparked in fact by a lousy piece of journalism by the New York Times. We have to call them out on this. Uh, and the New York Times story, I, I read it very closely. 
refers to makes two casual references to uh, uh, to news click that once it was raided but they found no evidence that it had some connection to the chinese and secondly that uh, it it uh, it put out chinese talking points whatever that means as though that were an offense and it's completely untrue as well no connection was shown to any funding by a foreign government or any agency other than those which were declared before the authorities including the reserve bank of india the courts initially gave them decent protection then the judge was changed and the ed went to uh, this court and said it had fresh material and yeah we, we and if you read the fir they tried to keep secret but thanks to resourceful journalists it came out it's it's a look into the muddled and stupid police mind there are good policemen good police officers but this was an extremely muddled piece of writing you can see what, what it is a dystopian you can imagine a dystopian police state and unless uh, people like our distinguished friend mr hegde uh, uh, score in the courts uh, I, I have. Uh, I'm disappointed that uh, it has stayed, the, uh, the higher judiciary has taken its own time in uh, looking into this matter seriously, and no relief has been provided. But here is a man who is not bitter, because he's fighting the good fight, and he's optimistic. He has confidence in the people and in the legal system. This is a story that is not in the book, but that's a story that I think. Uh, stares us in the face today and i compliment the press club of india and everyone here present in this uh, in this meeting for expressing solidarity which has encouraged me so why the news click see we are doing then a small movement like so hame marna band karo chota 15 20 log hai but in india there are so many newspapers so many channels none of them covered even a single day there is the only one that news click they covered more than the 20 times in this one and a half years time the people's voice way can hear they given the space for the marginalized oppressed that is the reason they want to government want to crush it is not that the paisa waha se ida paisa sabka milte hai sabka hote hai including the ruling party also receive the money and everybody to run the show they need a money there is nothing nobody is violating if they are violating you have to prove and you have to show the proof and you can do you cannot crush the media just say it, stating something but the truth is actually they have given the voice for the all the marginalized i don't want to use the voiceless the marginalized also has the voice that voice they have given in the echo way in the whole media world that is the crime the state is doing but i salute even the news click they are still giving the same voice even without the prabir even today and you, the state cannot crush that voices at all in the tihar or any jail